Drivers, you may already know about wreaths across America. If you do not, well, we're going to share some information with you right now. Deborah Sparks is the Director of Corporate Development and Community Relations for Reese Across America, and Deborah joins us right now. Welcome, Deborah. Hi, thank you so much. Hey, thank you for being here. Um, and on behalf of our nation and everyone, uh, I, I, I just want to say thank you to Reese Across America uh, for years now. The mission, uh, you know, from the beginning has been a very noble mission. For those who don't know, Deborah, fill us in. Um, how did this begin, and what is Reese Across America? What is the mission here? You know, that's a great question. It's, it's a good year to share that story. So, um, Moral Wooster is our founder, and when he was a nine years old, he won a contest as a paper boy to come to Washington, D.C. And for 10 days, they toured the city, and at the end, and he went home. The lasting impression for him was Arlington National Cemetery and, and the beauty and scope of it, but the reality that those men and women buried there represented freedom, um, the sacrifice ultimately that those men and women made for the freedoms that we all have. And when he became an adult and a wreath maker, um, he had overproduced for a very large customer that he had just landed, and he had a surplus of about 5,000 wreaths. He told his wife, Karen, um, it, actually, she was his junior high school sweetheart. Mm. Um, they had three young children at the time. And he said, you know, I'd like to take the wreath to Arlington. And they did it as a family project. And it was about 10 years into it that it's rumored that it was an Air Force pilot that had taken the iconic photo. They had just laid the wreath. It had just snowed. Um, and an Air Force pilot, we believe, flew over and took this picture and posted it to the um, internet and it went viral wow. um, and that's really what put Reese Cross America on the map because when families learned and heard of this they reached out and and said you know can you put one on my son or daughter's grave can you do it you know outside of Arlington can you do it here in Ohio can you do it in California and within two years that volume um, from from folks really forced um, the family to start the nonprofit Reese Across America, and trucking got involved right away because as Karen was talking, um, Moral's wife Karen was talking to um, all these different family members, and she was making the promise, yes, we'll help. She started calling her local truck companies and saying, hey, is anybody going to Ohio? Is anybody going to California? Can I throw an extra box on your truck? And, and the trucking industry, that's how they started. And it was that charitable spirit that still holds today when we'll go to almost 1,500 locations. And as we announced just last week, um, we'll be taking um, the very first loads to France, to Normandy this year. Wow. Wow. Uh, th this is incredible when, in fact, uh, that announcement came across uh, it, it, it was just it, it was staggering to, to go back and and look at the history of Reese across America and then and then realize, you know, how quickly this caught on. And a lot of that has to do, Deborah, I think, with I mean, as you mentioned and pointed out really there with the story about the beginning, it, it was people that wanted to get involved. I mean, this there's there's I don't know that there's a, a better um, uh, demonstration of a real grassroots effort for something like this. You know, and, and you're exactly right. And I think, you know, I, I watch every year. I've, I've been doing it now um, for almost 13 years within the trucking industry. And I think what why this has taken off is that within all of us, it's kind of like that that three degrees of somebody that you know that you're connected to. We all have somebody very close that is either in the military, served in the military, has lost someone in the military. And, you know, on a daily basis, I get to talk to the drivers, I get to talk to the carriers, and everybody's got that story. It's, mm -hmm. it's a father, it's a son, it's an uncle, a grandparent, um, and, and it's that, that internal desire or need to support the work that they did for us and to continue that mission almost to serve them and to give back for what they did for us. Right. Uh, so here we are. Uh, we're, 
I can't believe it. I, I said to myself, you know, I, I can't believe it's it's already this time of year. I, I said that to myself <laughs> earlier today. I was really having trouble believing it. I was I, I almost had to look it up to prove it. Yeah. Um, but but here we are. And I guess the question is, um, because I know sometimes we hear about uh, such great organizations and such great efforts. And then we realize oh my goodness, um, I haven't done enough. I haven't done anything. What is it that I can do? And I know drivers are always going out of their way. Uh, you mentioned 13 years you know, of, of being with the organization. Um, and in my 22 years of doing this program, I just, I, there's, there's, I've never met a driver that would say, no, I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. They, they always want to get involved. So the ultimate question is, is it too late for drivers to get involved uh, with Reese across America? No, no, absolutely not. And I, so right now where we sit today, we have probably about 20 loads open. Um, we, what's really unique this year, um, we've opened up two new cross docks. So we have um, now a total of four. So we can pull either from Maine, a cross dock in St. Louis, Missouri, um, cross dock in Richland, Mississippi, one in Fife, Washington, and one in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I probably right now coming out of Phoenix, I have one open load coming out of St. Louis. I have four coming out of Fife. I have one and then the rest are coming out of Maine. Um, when we come out of a cross dock, they typically have multiple stops coming out of Maine since it's a little bit further. Right. Um, they generally have fewer stops. Um, so the number one thing that we would need that's right up the alley for, for trucking is helping to do those loads. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is that um, we always find a way when somebody says, I want to help, we find a way to utilize that help. And, and one of the biggest things that we have heard um, is from some of our um, sponsors, our big sponsors that specifically come from the trucking industry that say, hey, how can I give back? And one of those would be the National Association of Independent Truckers, who, who gives a substantial donation to help our owner operators with fuel assistance. Mm. And, you know, anybody that's considered wanting to haul a load that thinks, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm not sure I can financially do it. Um, if the fuel assistance is that turning point that can help them, we have that. It's available. Um, you know, we have a whole other program called our Honor Fleet which is for those that are in the trucking industry that may not necessarily be able to, to haul for us this year, but they want to do a small donation. Um, it, it gets them a sweatshirt that says they are a member of the honor suite, but a portion of that will put a, I believe it's two wreaths at, a, um, at two veteran gravestones. Um, they can call me, they can email me. I can always tell them um, how they can help, how they can participate. Yeah, it's it's such a beautiful effort and watching it come together. Uh, it really is amazing. Um, all right. If, if when when you're looking at this, I guess um, are in terms of the locations you mentioned right now, the need and how many open loads you have. Uh, I mean, is it literally growing every year? Are you seeing this this um, I, I guess this effort? Uh, getting getting calls and input and and uh, and demand, if you will. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, are you getting? Is the calling growing every year? That's a great question, and yes. Yeah, so if if we're sitting right now looking at about twenty loads over the next two weeks, that's going to go up as well. So mm -hmm. it, what really happens is is that we have within the within the frame of which we work. We have new locations coming on, so we might have somebody within their community that has a small cemetery that they discover that there are veteran gravestones there, and they sign on to do that small local cemetery. Mm. We also have where we see the biggest volume of growth is our existing locations. Each year as they perform um, their ceremonies and the wreath laying event, it brings more awareness, which means they get more fundraising, which means we're covering a larger percentage of those locations. So it it could be that if I have, um, you know, if, if you take like a Calverton or Long Island, New York, there's 260,000 gravestones at each of those locations. 
when we started off, we were looking at one or two trucks to each. Now we're looking at almost 10 trucks to each. By next year, we might be looking at 12 to 14 trucks each. So the existing locations are growing. Um, so so it, it, it happens either through new locations or existing locations growing, um, being able to fundraise and put more wreaths at that location. Wow. Uh, we're talking with Deborah Sparks. She's the Director of Corporate Development and Community Relations for Wreaths Across America. Deborah, we understand uh, that there's an opportunity for a professional driver to actually win a seat in this year's Escort to drive the first ever honor truck. Uh, first of all, tell us about the honor truck and tell us how we can nominate a driver. So I got to tell you, this, this, the Worcester family always, their heart and souls every day of the year are in Reese Across America. It's truly a calling for them. And we actually had. In our convoy, it is an established set based on the police escort all the way down from Maine to Virginia. There can only be X number of vehicles for pure safety reasons. This year, we did have one of our um, trucking companies was not able to be in the convoy. And what the family came up with was just this amazing idea. Um, And it was really able to happen because of um, generous donation of Freightliner Um, and CLC for donating the trailer. Mm. And what they did is they have created this lead truck and trailer that is um, representative of all trucking companies that are honoring the mission of Reese Across America. And what they said is, you know, we're all very, very familiar with the American Gold Star Mothers. We have an amazing relationship with them. But as we know, in the trucking industry, it's about 94 percent are males. And over the years, we've heard more and more stories um, from our our Gold Star fathers and our Gold Star drivers. And they came up with the idea that wouldn't it be amazing if we could um, open up a contest because we know there's there's thousands of drivers out there that whether or not it's time, money or their company, they're just not able to participate but the driver themselves wants to do it. And they have opened up this contest on our Facebook page um, where you can go in, you can nominate yourself, you can nominate another driver by simply telling us a brief story about the driver and why they feel he or her um, would be the best representative as a Gold Star CDL operator to haul that lead truck from Maine to Arlington in the week-long convoy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, it's, that's just amazing. Um, you know, again, this effort grows and grows and, and these great ideas that come about as this effort grows and this mission grows is just truly amazing to watch. Um, and and so where do they go again to nominate the driver? So what I would encourage that they do is they would go to facebook.com slash W A A H Q. Um, so facebook.com backslash W-A-A-H-Q, and they will see a place um, to nominate um, their, dri- their themselves or a driver um, for the contest. All right, great. And, and when is that driver uh, going to be announced? So the contest is running right now. It will go through the 20th, and then we have a small group um, of folks not, not directly involved, not staff, that's going to review this um, representatives of the industry that are going to review all the applications and our goal will be to make the announcement very shortly after november 20th we want to give folks enough time to 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 be able to make the travel plans to come to maine and and take that journey with us for five days all right and 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 for and 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 again to recap here uh for reese across america uh the date is december 15th correct that is the date that that all of the reese are are laid on on in those in those cemeteries yes that's correct december 15th all right um and let's expand ever for a moment on on the mission in normandy and and how this came about i mean this is just amazing uh, tell us tell us how this happened so that's that's a great question so um Morrill's vision all along has to make sure that every veteran, no matter where he is laid to rest, will one day have a wreath on their gravestone. Um, with our international locations, wh- what we've done um, 
we have patriots all over the country, Americans everywhere, um, serving on different bases. And typically a lot of those locations will receive a wreath or some kind of ceremony, but they're sourced from that country. Mm. Um, What is so unique about Normandy, um, and ironically enough, it was September 11th this year that we got the letter from France Wow. Giving us permission to bring our fresh balsam main um, wreaths to France. Wow. Um, it, it took quite a while working with our own um, United States Department of Agriculture. Um, we have a very, very, and those in the trucking industry understand these tight logistics, but we literally will have um, about a three to five day window from our Department of Agriculture. Um, inspecting the wreaths in Maine, us getting them boarded and loaded down the coast to JFK um, and to Dulles International on multiple flights um, that have all been donated, donated, the truck, the flights, um, the logistics. We will get them into France. Um, We have rebranded the mission. Um, It's still Reese Across America, but for this first international mission, it's called Advancing the Mission. Um, We've got um, decaled French trailers that will be carrying um, truck and trailers with a full French escort um, to Normandy. We have um, we're reaching out to all the family members that may have um, loved ones buried there to participate and join with us. And one of the greatest honors that I'm so proud of, um, I get to volunteer with the team that runs Arlington National Cemetery and the logistics and the organization that they ha- that they do every year to run Arlington, that core team has been invited to Normandy to actually host and run that entire program. Um, it'll be a little different. Um, we get to lay the wreaths down, but within three days we do have to pick them up and remove them. Um, but it it's it's something that we didn't think would happen this fast. So when we got that letter on September ninth, September eleventh, we were we were in shock and awe and and we started moving very quickly and we are so thrilled. Um, We've got a um, ceremony, a candlelight ceremony that will happen there the evening before we let, before we lay the wreaths, the entire family is going to be able to go. So it's a really big event for us. Wow. Uh, Just amazing. I, I, I just, I, I think of uh, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, was a truck driver uh, working in the oil industry, hauling hauling pipe, uh, and then at the at the old age of thirty eight, enlisted and went into the war, World War Two. He uh, became a a tank driver, and which of course fit naturally for him. Fought in the Battle of the Bulge, and came home and uh, continued driving truck in the oil fields. In fact, uh, that's he 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 passed. Uh, in an accident uh, while while hauling uh, those pipes. And I think of his service. He died uh, 10 years before I was born, uh, but I think of his service and in, in, in going back and doing some research for the family tree and trying to gather as much information as I can from my mom and her brother and her sisters uh, about his service. I think it's so imperative, you know, to do that, uh, not just because he was my grandfather, but because I think it's important to document as much as we can about everyone who did serve. Um, and, you know, when we look at, I look at the efforts uh, behind Reese across America, I, I just, it's, it really is, it's staggering and it's humbling. Uh, you know, it's something that, that uh, I know uh, you folks at the organization take very seriously. And uh, it's just, it really is heartwarming to see this expand now to Normandy. I mean, I guess there's a possibility we could, we could be at some point calling it Reese across the world. You know, I mean, that's, that's just amazing. It really is amazing, yes. Deborah. Um, just, just great to, to, uh, to watch if they want to learn more. Um, you know, we have a number of listeners that, that are not in the trucking industry. If they want to get involved, if they want to uh, donate, where can they go, Deborah? You know, the best place for anyone to start with is, is at wreathsacrossamerica.org. Um, you know, it, it's as simple as donating a wreath. Um, it can go into a general fund if there's not a particular location that anybody, you know, we've got a lot of people that really don't have direct 
relationships with anybody, Barry. They may not know their family history yet. Right. You can do it just a very simple $15 wreath donation, and we will make sure it goes to a, a location um, that, that maybe is struggling. Maybe it was hit hard by a hurricane, flooding. Mm. Um, a lot of times we have those special needs, a location that's always been successful, but this year maybe we have a new location coordinator and they're struggling with fundraising. It's as simple as a one wreath donation. We have um, the um, Truckers Patriot Pair um, where we can ship one to a location of your choice and one to um, a, an individual. One of the biggest things that I see so many of our motor carriers do, which just warms my heart, is they will actually use, if they are doing some kind of a corporate gift giving, um, a lot of our motor carriers, they're so proud of this program, they will actually have um, a, sh a wreath ordered and placed on behalf of one of their customers. Um, so we, we can have you know up to 1,000 wreaths donated from a motor carrier who sends out a notice to their customer that a wreath has been laid in their name, which is w one of the things I'm most proud of. Wow. Um, but there are so many different ways that people can get involved for as simple as that first donation price of $15. Wow. Uh, Deborah, uh, before we let you go, can you describe to us um, what what a moment is like, what a day is like at one of these cemeteries when a wreath is laid down, when these wreaths are laid down? Um, I know may, it might be hard to put a lot of that in, into words, but give us a descriptive for for those who aren't aware. So um, there's several diff different emotions and reactions that I've seen, um, and and there's quite a few that stand out. Um, you know, for me, it, it's the mission of having to say the individual's name out loud, right. um, and and that's what always gets me. That it's not. It's not this whole field of, of gravestones. It's, it's an individual. Yeah. It is a real life and a real person that sacrificed for us. And it's when you actually get up to that gravestone and you read their first, middle, and last name, the year they were born, the year they died, and the branch of service. Um, and I, I think what resonates most for me is, and it wasn't all that emotional, but it was Part of our mission is to make sure that that next generation, our kids, know about that ultimate sacrifice. Yes. And it was watching this Boy Scout troop. Um, they actually challenged the young men um, to go out and, and to do just that and to read the name. And, and one of the kids pulled out his cell phone, and he actually entered in the information from the gravestone and actually found a family member that lived nearby and reached out through social media and took a picture of the gravestone with the wreath on it and said to the family member, you know, we were today honoring your family member and sent the picture. Well, it ended up that that family had been a little bit separated throughout the years through a small family argument. And when that one loved one saw the picture from this young Boy Scout laying the wreath at the gravestone, they shared it with their family members that they had been estranged from, and it pulled the family back together, knowing that one small act of kindness of laying that wreath to remember their family member connected that family back together through that one little social media connection. Wow. Um, so there's a lot of healing that happens, that, that, and there's just more and more of these stories and, and how it pulls family together and helps the healing. You know, it's just amazing. Um, again, Deborah, I have to say, uh, on behalf of our nation, thank you to everyone, uh, you know, going back to the beginning of this and anyone else who gets involved uh, to donate, volunteer, help promote Reese Across America. Uh, this is this is such important work. Uh, and and I, I know uh, that it pales in comparison to the very important job uh, that these that these veterans did that these that that yeah. these who served did but but i i think as you mentioned earlier as as it is the mission to to give them this honor um i think it's bigger than than we can possibly measure um and i i just look at it and again it's it is just terrific to watch it really really is if you want to get involved reese across america.org follow along on social media 
uh, and be active. Uh, it, at the very least, share. You can do that on social media. If you don't have enough to, to, uh, to donate, if you don't have uh, uh, the time to volunteer, then share the information with others on your social media and, and help get the word out. Uh, this is a tremendous mission, a tremendous organization. And uh, very proud to have you on, Deborah. Thank you so much for being here. And, and God bless you and all of those that reach across America. Thank you so much. And thank you to your grandfather for his service and for having such an amazing grandson. Thank you. Red Eye Radio. I'm.